but just somebody who is like a third connection, you know, somebody who it's obvious that you don't know each other. You may not necessarily run in the same circles, but it, it'd be nice to have that connection. I was like, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Hi, I'm Kyle Weckerly, certified professional ghostwriter. I'm glad you're listening as I welcome industry experts to share stories. You'll hear of lessons learned the hard way, overcoming professional hurdles, turning experience into actionable knowledge, and how to connect with your target audience. This is the Career Challenges Podcast. Welcome to this episode of the Career Challenges Podcast, and my guest is John Rue. He is the head copywriter of Guerrilla Marketing Agency and an award-winning speaker. So, John, welcome to the Career Challenges Podcast. Thank you, Kyle. It is great to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. And so you're, you're now the head copywriter. I understand that just happened within the last month, right? Yes. Yes, that uh, we talked about it and decided on it within the last three weeks or so, and I made it official and known to the world uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so have you worked with them before, I guess, as a freelancer, or did you know somebody who had worked there already? How did you, uh, how did you attain this position? Well, I met the founder and creative director, Wendy Stevens. Mm -hmm. We connected through LinkedIn and had a, a couple of conversations. Then I worked on a project with her and she invited me to be their, their go-to copywriter and their official head copywriter, awesome. which I said, I'll jump at that chance. I am now listed on their website as the head copywriter for the agency. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I saw that when you posted on LinkedIn, I went and saw that and I had heard of Guerrilla Marketing, um, well, the book first by Jay Conrad Levinson, um, but the Guerrilla Marketing Agency, I think I've heard of it at least one more time, one other time before you had um, got the position there. So I went and looked at their website and I was really impressed by it. It's, uh, it looks like a very, what's the word, like a full scope agency, I, I guess I should yes. say, because you guys do a lot. And, you know, of course, copywriting is an important part of any marketing um, strategy, but it was like, a, you know, they're doing all these specific types of marketing campaigns for different mediums, which was uh, really cool uh, from what I saw. Anyway, some of them I see, even here in San Antonio, they focus really on just one type of, of marketing right. and that's it. That's all they do. And yeah, not we, that that's we, bad. It just seems like they're pigeonholing themselves. Right. And we do a lot more. And I am exceptionally happy about this opportunity, Kyle. And one reason is, I mean, you mentioned Jay Conrad Levinson. Mm -hmm. Wendy Stevens was a protege and was mentored by Jay Conrad Levinson. Wow. I'm now working with her. She's now my mentor in this gorilla this guerrilla marketing thing. So I think this is pretty cool. I am being mentored by someone who was mentored by Jay Levinson. This wow. is a big deal. I'm excited about it. Yeah. And it's really amazing his, his work and his approach to it. And so it's great to see that now embodied in a, a marketing agency that's um, yeah. And then of course, now that you're a part of it and what they're doing um, just basically from a, a different perspective because uh, I, I interned for a big uh, marketing agency here in San Antonio once and it felt very much like a, like a firm, like a big name agency. And not that that was wrong is just when I was looking at grill marketing, it seemed more like, um, like, you know, a bunch of specialists were working together under a mm -hmm. common goal or a common umbrella. And I thought that was a really cool um, setup for them. Yeah. It, it I, I'm very happy to be part of it. And I mean, we try to stay true to the, the gorilla marketing name and run our own operation lean and mean, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so, Hey, I, I could go on and on, but I'm really, really excited to be part of it. And mm -hmm. it, part of it shows the power of having a, a big presence on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I connected with Wendy was through LinkedIn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You have been posting a lot too. And I noticed now, or now that you mentioned, it, I, I realized that as well. Um, but you know, copywriting, how did you get into to copywriting? I mean, what kind of sparked your interest to, to enter this field? Well, it's, it was kind of a roundabout way. I never occurred to me I would be doing this. 
Mm-hmm. And I, in 2005, I was 43 years old. And I'm happy to tell the world I'm 58 years old. I don't care. You know, I know there's a lot of awesome. age discrimination, but hey, I, 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 it is what it is. And I've got a lot of wisdom, a lot of maturity. Mm-hmm. And, but in 2005, at the age of 43, I had been out of college for a whole bunch of years. And I learned that I needed to develop poise and confidence, which I was lacking at the time. And I remembered having read See You at the Top by Zig Ziglar several Mm -hmm. years before. And Zig talked about how Toastmasters and public speaking could help you develop poise and confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason this was such a pressing issue for me was that I had such a lack of confidence and I don't, I don't really know why, Hmm. but I was on the verge of getting fired from the job I had at the time. Oh no. And uh, thank God I had a a boss who was very understanding Mm -hmm. and but I worked for an IT network support and consulting company and Mm -hmm. we did uh, support for the medical industry. So it Mm -hmm. was my job to go to medical practices and hospitals and solve networking computer problems. A lot of times under pressure, Mm -hmm. not in in front of doctors and in front of practice administrators is not a situation where you want to seem scared and timid. (laughs) Well, I was scared and timid Mm -hmm. and my boss said, Hey, you've got to do something. He had a couple of clients call and say, Hey, we don't want John back in our office. Oh no. That really hit me between the eyes. My boss said, you've got to do something about this. And I said, you're right. So that's when I remembered having read Zig's book 11 years before and remembering Toastmasters. And I said, okay, what have I got to lose? So I went and joined Toastmasters, which helped me overcome my fear of public speaking and develop poise and confidence to a high degree to the point where I'm now a fledgling professional speaker. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Mm -hmm. But that as much as anything is where I discovered my knack for persuasive writing. Really? And at the time I was also on the email list of a well-known self-published author in the, in the fitness realm mm-hmm. named Matt Fury. Matt Fury. And I think I've heard that name. He pioneered much of the current, a movement of no pun intended movement of body weight exercise as opposed to going to the gym. Yeah. yeah. And he wrote a, a and self published a book in 2000 called combat conditioning. He was a former collegiate wrestler, mm-hmm. but he was also a master copywriter still mm-hmm. is. And I was on his email list and he sent out an email, which I still have in my, in my email copywriting swipe file. Mm -hmm. an email and the subject line was something to the effect of how I do what I do, meaning how I sell these books and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it was him talking about the craft of copywriting and how it helped launch and grow his business as a self-published author. And it was a link, had a link to an affiliate link to a copywriting course through AWAI, a leading trainer of, of yeah. copywriters. And yeah, I heard of him. Did you also look into like Stephen Sloan White and uh, Pete Bowerman and Bob Lye? I learned about them later. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I've actually met Bob Lye, yeah. who was outrageously funny, by the way, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I didn't really know what copywriting was, but I... So this sounds interesting. I was already interested in persuasive writing with preparing speeches for Toastmasters. Mm-hmm. And I bought this, this home study course through AWAI and I started practicing this craft of copywriting. I learned I was good at it. Mm-hmm. I had a knack for it. Now, obviously it doesn't matter if you're talented, you've still got to put in a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And I, I did that. I did it to promote a fitness business I had at the time. I did it to help with my employer 
when I was still working for that company that does network support, Mm -hmm. I practiced and practiced and practiced, but I found out here three years later, after all this, I'm still practicing. I was afraid to take it to the next level and make it a business. Well, finally in 2009, I decided to take it to the next level and, and make it my business. And I moved from College Station, Texas to Austin. Mm -hmm. And that's really where I launched my copywriting business. Mm -hmm. And I've got some ideas that I think may be helpful to your audience. All right. Ideas about launching your own business or or Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, sure. What what are they? Well, so I had the baseline of skill, right? I had practiced. I had written some, some sample letters and so forth. When I moved to Austin, I went to a local nonprofit and I offered to write fundraising letters free of charge. I said, I'm starting this copywriting business. I'll write these fundraising letters for you free of charge. All I ask in return is that if you feel I did a good job, that you give me a written recommendation and that you give me copies on your, of my work on your letterhead that I can use for my portfolio. Wow. And that was 10 years ago. I still have those copies and that testimonial. So they were happy with the work I did. And in essence, even though I didn't get paid mm-hmm. in money, that was my first client project. Wow. So anybody who is wanting to start a freelance business, that might be a good avenue mm-hmm. for them to go, to go down is to approach a nonprofit and offer to do some pro bono work. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, they're always interested in pro bono work, but also I learned that despite being quote unquote nonprofits, they still ha- will have a full marketing budget um, just because mm-hmm. for their, their fundraising purposes and to run a company, they still need a, a full marketing budget. And so I've talked with a lot of uh, people who work in marketing specifically in the nonprofit space. And they say it feels like a normal agency to them as well. Um, the only difference is their goals. Now, of course, in a, a for-profit um, uh, scenario or environment, they're going to be looking you know, to bring in clients and da, 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 and all those content marketing strategy uh, ideas. For them, it's really more about how can we help our whatever our, our, our mission is, you know, are we helping right. youth? Are we helping the homeless? And that's really what their marketing is more geared towards is getting people oh, it is. raising awareness for that and, you know, getting funds for that as well. So, But make, and, make no mistake. There is still selling involved. True. Yeah. It's for me, I feel it's more of a, a heart selling. They're, they're trying to sell, you know, you're a good person. If you help us do this, that kind of feeling. And I know that may sound a little, um, cold and business like but also you got to understand you know you got to you got to keep the doors open and if you don't get people to uh, oh yeah if you don't raise awareness for what you're doing and get funding then it doesn't matter who you're helping if you can't keep the doors open and keep the lights right on. so so that was that was how i got started mm-hmm. awesome when you finally were able to to get more uh copywriting work did you see kind of where your, your desire to, to, to copyright and write persuasively um, also kind of overlapped a little bit with your, your previous IT experience? Actually, it did. Now, it wasn't right away. Mm-hmm. I went and did the local networking thing, which I enjoyed, mm-hmm. but it, it taught me a valuable lesson that it, when you're networking, you want to be strategic about it. Mm-hmm. I I went to places, networking meetings where there were local businesses, plumbers, florists, real estate agents, Mm -hmm. people like that. And I made a lot of friends. It was a good experience, but it was not a good market for my copywriting services. And although it did, it did help me build a very basic portfolio and get some project experience. For example, through that local networking scene in Austin, my first project was the content for a building contractor's website. Mm-hmm. It was about six pages. I got paid $125. Wow. <laughs> that's Which a, that's I would bad. charge <laughs> a whole lot more than that today. True. Yes. And 
that was all he could pay. I needed the experience. I needed the portfolio. I did it. And, you know, I started building on that. I made some local connections with some consultants who did marketing for local companies. And, but what really took my business to the next level was meeting somebody who taught me how to use LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I will get to that in a moment. But about this time, I also hired the, the services of a coach, mm -hmm. a copywriting coach whose business it is to help freelance copywriters become successful. Mm -hmm. And her name was, she's deceased now, sadly, mm -hmm. but her name is, was Chris Marlowe. And she required all of her students to pick a niche to pick a particular industry to work in. Mm -hmm. And because I had a background in business to business technology, we decided to make that my, my niche in, in copywriting mm -hmm. because I had a unique perspective. I, when I was in it, we would buy products, it products, servers, software, sometimes $20,000 worth of, of it stuff. Mm -hmm on behalf of our clients. So I was marketed to by the IT companies, the, the technology companies, both hardware and software. And then when I became a copywriter for B2B technology, I was the one helping those companies, in some cases, the very same companies do their marketing. <laughs> so it came full and circle for you. <laughs> so it gave me, I had a unique experience that helped me write more effective copy because I had been in the shoes of the reader. Mm -hmm. So that became that, that was my niche. And then once I really started ramping up my LinkedIn presence, I connected with an agency that really helped me, helped me launch that uh, agency and a, a couple of individuals who helped me launch this aspect of my business. Uh, one of them it was an agency that out of Albany, New York, that specializes in lead and demand generation for technology companies. Mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and mention their name. It's a uh, high impact prospecting, which is now HIP B2B. Mm -hmm. And I'm still friends with them, although we've never met in person. Mm -hmm. They were instrumental in helping me take my business to another level. I wrote lead generation emails and landing pages and blog articles for them. But, emails and landing pages for five companies in the fortune 100 wow. with them. And I, I got glowing written testimonials and samples, which I still use to this day, five years later, and then made some other connections all through LinkedIn, which seems to be a common thread here. Yeah. Well, that, that seemed to be where a lot of, um, not only businesses transacted, but kind of where, you know, professionals show up and we all are, we all know we're professional. We have different skills. So let's, let's find where those, those strategic connections can be made and who we can um, benefit the most. And so that's what I'm finding out about LinkedIn as well. And I'm, I'm connecting with so many people and just in the last month, I don't know what it was. I am doing more, uh, following more along the lines of Josh Steinle's seven systems of influence and I've changed some things in my, my profile and I've noticed I'm getting more invitations now, whereas I felt I was mm -hmm. going out and, and inviting people to connect. Now more people are wanting to connect with me, which is great. Um, and some of them are not, not good. I have to say as anyone, I guess I should ask this, has anyone approached you and like their, their profile seemed okay, but then automatically after you make the connection, they're like, well, I have a great offer for you. Oh. Uh, yes, that has happened quite a few times. And mm -hmm. I, I look at it, there are a couple of things. I, there are people on LinkedIn who are, I don't know if they're big influencers or what, but they have, okay, I just passed the 4,000 connection mark. Wow. Uh, there are people who I'm connected with who have 75,000. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking you can't possibly interact with 75,000 people. And they will post things and have 600 comments and they reply to them all. I'm thinking, okay, they probably have a, an assistant 
Yeah, they'd have to. You just can't do it all. No. And they will sometimes have these, these posts where they say, build your network, like this, comment, and connect with whoever responds. And I tried that a couple of times. I got some connections that just weren't valuable connections. Mm-hmm. And I'm not disparaging anybody, but you know, there were, there were people who I'm thinking there was no valid reason I could think of for us to really, for us to be connected. Mm -hmm. And I started, or I quit doing that. I am much more discriminating in the connections I take. Mm -hmm. And I, I am not afraid to decline an invitation and it happens to me and that's okay. Yeah. You know, if, if somebody decides not to connect with me, I don't mind, yeah. but I'm in the same situation as you are now, Kyle. I have developed a, a lot of a, a pretty big LinkedIn presence, engaged in a lot of activity. As you've seen, I post a few times a day mm-hmm. and I comment on other people's stuff. I connect with typically 10 to 15 new people a day. And I'm getting more and more connection requests myself. Mm -hmm. Some of what I would consider really high value connections. Mm -hmm. I was curious too. They say you need to personalize each invite. And I've, I've did that with some, but others, I just kind of, hit connect and then that was it i didn't really think too much of it well um and i have a I've thought seen, on that yeah i haven't seen a, a huge difference between the the personalized invites and the non-personalized so i'm, I'm one, yeah go ahead i'm curious what is your your opinion on that I, I used to put a personalized message with every connection request and i heard somebody say just hit the connect button you won't notice the difference <laughs> so i just started hitting the connect button and guess what i get just as many people saying yes than I did as I did before. Mm -hmm. And it's, it saves a lot of time not doing the personalized request. Sure. But what I do, anybody who connects with me now, I send a personalized thank you and never ever. And I'll admit in the old days, I was a bit guilty of this, but never do I go in and say, and pitch my services right away. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, but believe me, some people do that to me and I don't blame them, but I, I've learned not to do that. I am as pro sales as anybody you will meet. I mean, selling is the backbone of our capitalist economy, but Mm. connecting with somebody on LinkedIn and then immediately doing a sales pitch is just not good etiquette. No, my opinion. And that, that happened the other day too. And, um, no personalized invite, I said yes to it. And then I think within a couple hours, he just wrote a simple message that said, hello there. I was like, well, that's kind of odd. And I, it should have tripped in my mind that other people have done that same approach. And the moment I said, well, how are you? What can I help you with? And they're like, well, I have a great opportunity for you, you know, and it's like automatically block that person, you know, in the connection right there. I'm like, I, I, I can't put up with this. Um, but there was one guy and he was from, uh, outside the country. Um, Mm -hmm. he did a personalized invite, but he said, I'm not going to pitch you anything. I'm not trying to get, you know, a a sale here. I just thought that our, our uh, backgrounds, our profiles kind of had some similarities and I thought it'd be great to connect with you. And I think we could really learn a lot from each other. I was like, there you go. I'll say yes. If we never talk to each other again, that's fine. But I'm like there, that's how you do it. When you're definitely approaching somebody who is, you know, in another country in his, in his situation would have been somebody from another country, but just somebody who is like a third connection, you know, somebody who it's obvious that you don't know each other. You may not necessarily run in the same circles, but it, it'd be nice to have that connection. I was like, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Well, I, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there. That's I probably want to edit this part, <laughs> but it's more like a caboose of thought at the moment. <laughs> well, Another thing I do, so I will, I will send the personalized thank you to everybody pretty much who connects with me. Mm -hmm. And for the, for the time being, that's it. 
They, they have an awareness of who I am. They may have looked at my profile. And by the way, I'm getting a lot more profile views than I used to. Mm. And, but what I will do is after I say, thank you, I'll just kind of let it rest. Then I'll go back and look maybe a few days later and take a look at the profile. I'm thinking, do they have some kind of, uh, they have content I can comment on an article I can share. Mm -hmm. And I will do that from time to time. I will, if they have written and posted an article and said, this is really great. I will comment on it and thank them and oftentimes share it. Mm -hmm. Now I have no ulterior motive there. I'm not thinking, Oh boy, if I share their content and compliment them, they're going to use my copywriting services. I have no notion that they will do that. And I don't expect them to, but I think it helps build your brand, your professional brand is somebody who is a giver Mm -hmm. and is not there just to, just to pitch. Yeah. And then what I will do after I felt like, felt like I've built up some social capital, if you will, Mm -hmm. I will often suggest a brief phone call and say, Hey, we have some common interests. Your business looks interesting. It's very complimentary with what I do. Mm -hmm. I would if you're open to it, what do you say we have a 30 minute phone call just to, just to learn more? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, this really only happened once with me. And that was a uh, Cassandra Robinson. She was a previous guest of mine as well, but Nadia Noel and Glade had uh, suggested, Hey, you should you know connect with Kyle. And so we just had a conversation, you know, what do you do? And, and um, sharing and, you know, eventually she became a guest on the show, but it was really more, get to know you, which I thought was really cool, but that's only happened once with me. So how does it, how does it work for you? Uh, and of course in, in your, your branding experience. Well, no, that has, that's worked well. It's led to opportunities. That's how just taking that approach is how I got my current opportunity with Wendy Stevens and gorilla marketing agency. Wow. So I would say it's worked incredibly well, but in other situations, like in 2014, when I connected with the founder of, of High Impact Prospecting, the, lead, the B2B lead generation agency in Albany, I connected with him and he had founded and moderated a group, a LinkedIn group. I posted, didn't pitch my services and got to know him built up a little bit of a, of a relationship there. Then I sent him a direct message, not selling. I said, his name is Brett Smith. Mm -hmm. He's a real B2B marketing influencer. I I said, Brett, I see you have a blog. Your agency has a blog. If you ever need an additional writer, I'd be happy to, you know, additional Content, content for your blog. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you about that. Well, he did. And I wrote a handful of articles and that led to the opportunity where I wrote the emails that I mentioned for, and the landing pages for the five companies in the fortune 100. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because he, he liked the experience he had working with me on his blog. So he put me in touch with his creative director and one thing led to another and I said, I would turn around and said, Whoa, this is pretty cool. I'm writing for the fortune 100 now. <laughs> yeah. And so that was a prime example of how I use LinkedIn in a low pressure manner to, to get a, a very wonderful client relationship. And if I had approached him and said, I've got this great opportunity. I'm a copywriter. You need what I have. As soon as we connected, it would have turned him off. Definitely. So I'm not saying never pitch. There comes a time. I mean, you're in business. You're, Mm -hmm. you have to sell eventually, but just kind of feel it out and gauge when it might be the right time. Would you like to be a guest on the career challenges podcast? Go to careerchallengespodcast.com to find out how, while you're there, check out other episodes and download them through Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Stitcher podcast addict, CastBox, Spotify, iHeartRadio, 
and more. The Career Challenges Podcast is hosted by me, Kyle Weckerly. I'm a certified professional ghostwriter who works with business thought leaders and industry experts to write polished manuscripts, assess their publishing options, and create book marketing plans. I've worked with consultants, high-ticket salespeople, coaches, speakers, C-level executives, and business owners. My authors have worked for USAA, Vistage, Booz Allen Hamilton, Austin Technology Council, and the John Maxwell team. My authors want to write a book to serve as a platform for their marketing endeavors. They know that becoming an author will help them secure speaking gigs, market their expertise, promote a product or service, and more. Are you ready to turn your experience, knowledge, and stories into actionable advice and connect with your ideal client? Then visit WeckerlyWriter.com to schedule a consultation today and begin your publishing journey. That's WeckerlyWriter.com. W-E-C-K-E-R-L-Y. W-R-I-T-E-R dot com. And now, back to the Career Challenges podcast. Yeah, because there's, there's times where you, I think it's obvious between you and the other party that, you know, you, you could pitch each other. You know, there's there's something there um, in podcasting specifically, and this is the example that came to mind. Um, this podcaster came up to me and he said, you know, I think... Um, we could both be of value to each other's audience. That was the way he phrased it. And I thought that was very diplomatic, very business of him to say that basically, you know, if, if I, if you want to be on my show, can I be on yours? And so I was like, and so I went and I listened to some of his podcasts, which you're supposed to do, uh, read up on him. And then I replied to him. I said, yeah, I really think I could be of, of a great value to your audience. So here is my pitch. Like that was, that was my bit there. And then I launched into, you know, how I could be of value to his audience. And he was like, there you go. Let's, let's do it. And then, you know, I sent him my scheduling link. He sent me his scheduling link. And so now we're, we're both scheduled to be on each other's podcast within the next month. So there's, there's those situations where it's obvious. Okay. There, there can be some sort of mutual give and take here. Um, Let's, let's go ahead and explore that. Um, But then most of the time on LinkedIn, I, I think it's better to take that low key approach. Like you said, because, you know, we're all trying to do, do our work and do our jobs here. Um, and it's, it's really counterproductive to be out there pitching people left and right the first thing you do. It may sound like the, the smart thing to do, but it's really counterintuitive or counterproductive to do that, which I find interesting. I agree. I mean, I started my career way back in the day out of college selling life insurance. This was in the stone age, you know, the Flintstones basically with no internet. And we would sit there at night and call on the phone, Mm -hmm. uh, complete strangers. Yeah. So, you know, it does, it does come as uh, being a little bit counterintuitive. You think you've got to go there and pitch, but if you take a different approach, a more giving approach, Mm -hmm. you're more likely to succeed. Definitely. I believe. Definitely. So you there's were... something about, there's something about attracting. Yeah. Are you familiar with Dan Kennedy? I've heard the name, I think. Okay. And also well, he you is, mentioned he... attracting. I thought of Jay Bear and um, his book utility as well, but go ahead. Oh, Dan Kennedy in the copywriting world is like the 800 pound gorilla. He is, he's a big, big, big deal. And, That's right. Okay. Now the name rang true. There it is. Okay. Well, (laughs) he, he, if I recall, he was the one who talked about, you don't want to be the unwanted pest. You want to be the invited guest. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do now is, and this would be a good time, I think, to segue into talking about speaking. Mm -hmm. I want to develop a presence, especially now that I'm with, Wendy and the team at Gorilla Marketing, I want to help help them grow. Mm-hmm. I want to develop a presence where I am doing a lot of speaking. Mm-hmm. And speaking and authoring are two things that can really build your credibility. Yeah. And I love speaking. Yeah. And I love speaking about copywriting and marketing and branding and such. And I really, I have big plans now of, starting to speak professionally with the goal of bringing in copywriting clients for, for guerrilla marketing. Mm -hmm. 
And so my, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to podcasters as well. Mm. Uh, you're actually, this is the second podcast I've been on and I kind of like this. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. A lot of them do set up more of that conversation base um, format or approach. Um, I've been on one or two where they, they send you a list of questions and that's what it is. They go through that list of questions in the podcast and it's not strict and, and cold and just, you know, here's how we're going to do it. It's just the, how they structure it and how, what works best for them. And so, you know, sometimes I'm wondering, do I need to do that? But most of the time I'm like, I really do enjoy more of this. Um, you know, we start talking and we see where the conversation goes and I don't think I've had a situation, knock on wood, I don't mean to be superstitious, but knock on wood where the conversation just went so far off that I'm like, okay, we, we've got to start over again. This is horrible. <laughs> Luckily that hasn't happened yet. I've, I've talked with only professionals on this professional podcast. Oh, great. So, uh, so where you, you said you started doing the speaking and then that's what led you into copywriting. Um, mm -hmm. Have you just kind of grown both of those in parallel over the last, last few years? Well, yes and no. I, so the Toastmasters, I think has been life changing for me. And it, it, that's where I discovered my knack for persuasive writing among mm -hmm. other things. And then it did so much for me personally and professionally. Toastmasters mm -hmm. did. It's a lot of work, but I went from being afraid of standing in front of a group of six or seven friendly people doing what's called the icebreaker speech with, I had it written out by hand, scribbled on a piece of paper mm -hmm. in 2005, and I basically stood there terrified, mumbling, clutching the lectern with the, what I call the Kung Fu death grip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I finished, but I did it. Yeah. And I just kept going and became more and more comfortable and developed more poise and confidence at it and more skill and knowledge with it. And Toastmasters has educational levels and designations you can reach. I achieved the highest one, the highest educational level in the program last August. And that is Toastmasters Advanced Communicator Gold. Wow. And it also gives you leadership opportunities within the club and the district. And I am currently in my club. I am the vice president in charge of education in the North San Antonio Toastmasters Club. But so as I developed more skill through Toastmasters, I started looking for outside speaking opportunities. And when, uh, for example, uh, several years ago, I was involved in a, an event in Austin called Product Camp. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting mix. It was a combination of mostly technology geeks and engineers mm -hmm. mixed together with technology marketers. <laughs> there you go. And it was a conference of sorts. They call it an unconference where hmm. people who wanted to make presentations submitted their, their proposals. And the, the conference attendees early, early in that morning would vote on which proposals they wanted to, to go forward. Wow. And that sounds kind of stressful because then you don't know if you're actually going to present or not until that day. You don't know until it's selected. So there's a little bit of a risk there. You don't know if yours has been selected, but mine was selected and I spoke to about 60 people on you guessed it, copywriting and marketing and sales. And uh, to backtrack a little bit, see, I had gained a certain level of comfort speaking in Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And that's a great launching point. But what I really wanted to do was start taking it beyond that. Mm -hmm. And instead of speaking to 10 or 15 people whom I know and I saw every week, I wanted to start speaking to larger groups. Well, in 2010, I got my first big opportunity. I was the MC at my 30 year high school reunion. Wow. And that was a blast. Mm. I, I really, really, almost 10 years later, I still remember that fondly. And then a year later, I spoke to a business group in College Station of it was about 80, 80 people. Now, not many of them were, they were probably not 
people who would become clients. And actually none of them ever did, but it was an opportunity to speak to a professional group about my, my specialty. And it was real world experience. I mean, I was speaking to 80 people who were paying to be there. It was a lunch. And so it wasn't like at Toastmasters where I could bomb, you know, I had to deliver on some level. Mm-hmm. So there was a little bit more pressure, but I, I accepted the challenge and I did it. And I can look back and say a little bit tongue in cheek. That was my first paid speaking engagement. There you go. <laughs> I got paid with a Starbucks gift card and a free lunch. Yeah. Hey, that's the best payment actually. So I, I, I say now I've been paid. I am a professional speaker. (laughs) Yeah. uh, So, you know, I, I've been to a few events like that and now I'm, you mentioned executive book review. Mm -hmm. I am on the faculty and board of directors of executive book review here in San Antonio. And I'm kind of the, of the 12 or 13 faculty members. I'm, we each have our different specializations. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of the go-to guy for talks on and book reviews on topics like branding and marketing and persuasive messaging and so forth. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I did one, I did a review this last Friday on a book called made to stick. Oh, the Heath brothers. I love the Heath brothers. Yes. The, the success, uh, layout that they did and um, all the stories that they wove, wove through that. Great read. Great read. Well, and so what I always try to do is not just stick to the book. Mm-hmm. I talk about the book, but I also bring in my own thoughts, stories, anecdotes, and observations mm-hmm. that are outside the book, but relate to it. Yeah. And now I'm not saying this to brag. <laughs> this is where the award-winning part does come in. I, I was the North San Antonio Toastmasters Club, uh, received the award for the funniest speaker of the year for 2018. There you go. Now, that's not the only award I've received. Okay, good. (laughs) But I always try to incorporate humor into talks as well. Yeah. And humor, I think, is um, it can scare a lot of people because you know you're trying to be funny. Now, a lot of times when you're trying not to be funny, that's when you are funny. Yeah. When you're trying not to be funny, that's sometimes when you are funny. But when it's a conscious effort, as I need to imbue humor into this, that's when it can really fall flat. And I, I speak from experience on that. I, I probably can have countless experiences where I tried to make something funny and it was <laughs> not funny, not funny. So, uh, so no, I have gotten to the point where, so I've, I've gone through the Toastmasters program and reached advanced communicator gold. I have spoken numerous times to groups of 40, 50, in some cases up to 80 to a hundred people. I've developed a great deal of comfort with that. And I really want to start taking it to a much larger, much larger audience. And matter of fact, I planted a seed. Mm -hmm. I go to community Bible church here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And one of my bucket list items is to, it, it's one of the largest churches in the country. And the auditorium, they have, I think, five services a weekend. And the auditorium holds over 3,000 people. I went up after the 8.30 a.m. service Sunday morning, and I spoke to the pastor, Ed Newton. And I said, I don't expect you to make a decision on this or to respond. I'm just putting this out there. It's on my bucket list. If it's God's will somehow, some way to speak to this congregation, awesome. I'm, just, I'm just putting it out there. Awesome. And so he, he may totally forget it, but I said, if it ever comes to fruition, great. If not, so be it. But I do want to start speaking to, to larger audiences. I've crossed the threshold where I'm very comfortable speaking to 40 or 50 people or up to a hundred. I want to start speaking to, a thousand plus. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, so then on, on that note, because you know, we, we don't know yet if you got the gig, but hopefully soon, but is there anything else on the horizon for you that's coming up for, for John Rue? Well, the opportunity with, with guerrilla marketing is mm-hmm. occupying much of my time and attention right now. And it's not a cut and dried set in stone 
this is what you do. I mean, I'm the head copywriter, yeah. but uh, so I will be writing projects and working with clients. But as things grow, I will probably be supervising other junior copywriters. And I want to use my speaking to really help grow the agency. Wow. And, you know, go to conferences and events or even hold my own conferences and events Mm -hmm. to do speaking on behalf of the agency to help grow it. So it's, it's yet to be determined how all this is going to take shape. Mm -hmm. So, and that's part of the excitement. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a new venture that's quite fluid. You know, it's not like there's a cut and dried way of doing things. Yeah. And that's, that's frustrating, but also fun at the same time. Cause exactly. it's like, you can, you can make it how you want, but it's obviously not going to go the way you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, awesome. Well, John Ruth, thank you so much for being on the career challenges podcast with me today. Well, Kyle, it's, it's been my pleasure. And yeah, I, I know a thing or two about changing careers. I mean, I've, I, I have done it two or three times in my career and mm-hmm. My my time as a copywriter, that was a major career switch and definitely not something I studied in college. So me neither, no. So we, we could probably go on and on talking about that, but thank you for the opportunity. I really enjoyed this. Me too. Thank you for listening to the Career Challenges Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and like the Career Challenges Podcast on your favorite podcasting app. Visit careerchallengespodcast.com for more information. Schedule your free consultation with Kyle Weckerly by visiting weckerlywriter.com today. That's W-E-C-K-E-R-L-Y-W-R-I-T-E-R.com. Thank you.